In this tutorial, we are going to walk you through some of the things that are automated using the Petstablish software. You will notice as you use the software that certain things will get updated as you process adoptions, as you receive applications, and as you receive donations through the system. Throughout this tutorial, we're going to give you different scenarios on when certain things in your account may be automated. So to start off simple, uh, we're going to take you to the pet section to show some of the things that are automated within the pet section. So in this section, the only thing that really gets automated are the pet statuses and if you go to actions and click edit, when the pet statuses change, so do the adoption application and the foster application drop downs. Now in case you're wondering what the adoption application and foster application drop downs are, they're actually the buttons that let you choose whether or not the adoption application on the pets page is visible or invisible and uh, whether the foster button on the pets public page is invisible or visible. Uh, just to show you what that looks like, I'm just going to take you to that page really quickly. And as you can see, uh, these are the buttons that those drop downs are linked to. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the only two things that are automated in this section are the pet status and those drop downs as the pet status changes. So uh, you're probably wondering, well, how does the status automatically change? So anytime that you process an adoption in the system and you finalize an adoption application, the pet status is automatically going to move from whatever status it currently is to adopted. And when that happens, the owner's name is going to appear in the owner column. And what happens is you are going to see that those drop downs within the pet edit page are going to be automatically moved to invisible. And of course, the reason, as you may have guessed, is because the pet's adopted. So of course, uh, no one's going to be able to apply to adopt uh, this pet or foster this pet anymore. One other thing to note about these dropdowns is that any time they are both set to invisible, the pet's adoption and foster applications are going to be disabled, and if both of them are set to invisible, the pet will actually be removed from our adoptable pet iframe, signifying that no one can apply to adopt or foster this pet, so we don't list it publicly. So please keep that in mind if you're wondering why uh, the pet is not showing on your iframe, on your website these would be set to invisible and that would cause that to happen. Also keep in mind that when you foster a pet, the pet status will automatically change to fostered. Uh, so it works pretty much the same way as adoptions work. Uh, the only difference is instead of both drop downs uh, becoming invisible, only the foster application drop down will become invisible because of course if the pet's fostered, uh, you're probably not going to want to see any other foster applications for that pet. Uh, if for some reason the current foster uh, tells you that they can no longer take care of the pet, uh, but they want to help find someone new, uh, you can just set this back to visible and people will be able to apply to foster the pet again. So moving on, uh, the next thing we're going to walk you through is application automation. So there's a lot of things going on in applications where uh, certain times, uh, many people may apply to adopt or foster the same pet. And what happens when one of these pets with multiple applicants gets adopted is that we actually remove that pet from the application and we put that pet in the requested pets column. Now the reason why we do this is very simple. Two people can't adopt the same pet. So the reason we do this is so that way you don't accidentally process the adoption for the same pet for two different applicants. Now just to show you what this looks like, here we have two applications for Babs. Uh, they're both adoption applications, so I'm going to go ahead and finalize one of them. And when I do this, you are going to notice that although one of the applications gets finalized and gets moved to the Adopted tab, the other application for Babs will now say there is no pet assigned to the application. However, if you look at the requested pets, you will see Babs is listed, meaning that Babs used to be on the app uh, and is no longer there. Uh, one thing to note, if uh, the application has two pets assigned to it, you will still see one of those pets assigned to the application as long as that pet also hasn't been adopted. One other thing to note here 
is that when a pet gets adopted, uh, the pet is going to be removed from all adoption and foster applications since the pet can no longer be adopted or fostered. However, if a pet gets fostered, then that pet is only going to be removed from current fostered applications. So one more thing dealing with application automation. Whenever you go to the pet section and you click on assign adopter or assign foster parent, if there is no application currently in the system for whatever contact you enter here, we process the adoption for the pet and we put the application in the finalized state in the adopted tab within your application section of your dashboard. And just to show you what this looks like, when I finalize this adoption and I go back to applications and I click on the adopted tab, you will see that the adoption I just finalized for Ariel is going to be listed in this tab automatically. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is automation that happens when you have an adopted pet which gets adopted by somebody else or when you have a fostered pet that gets fostered by somebody else. In this case we have Ariel's application already finalized, Ariel's currently adopted and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a, the pet section and I'm going to sign a new adopter to Ariel. Now to do this all you have to do is go to actions click assign adopter enter in the new pet parents name and click submit this will finalize the application for you uh, and it will then change the pet uh, from being adopted uh, to Mark which was the original adopter to Cindy who is the new adopter and some of the automation that happens the old application that was finalized for Mark will now actually show up in the return tab of the application section and in the adopted tab you will see Ariel is now adopted by Cindy so as you can see uh, when the pet was already adopted when I processed the new adoption it actually automatically returned the old application moved it to the return tab to let you know that Mark was the original owner of the pet and now in the adopted tab we have a finalized application for Cindy letting you know that Cindy is the current person who is the adopter of this animal. Now one uh, thing just to note, it's the same thing for foster applications. So let's say you have a pet that's constantly changing hands of fosters. Uh, you don't have to worry about going into the fostered tab and returning the pet here and then processing a new foster. All you have to do to assign the new foster for the animal is go to the pet section, go to actions for the fostered pet, and click assign foster and you will see here that it says change from foster uh, and they name the foster and then you could change it to uh, the new foster and once you do that the pet gets assigned to the new foster and the old foster application gets moved to returned the new one gets moved to the foster tab so one last thing I'm going to go through in terms of automation is contact automation Anytime someone sends in an application, anytime somebody donates to you through the website, we create the contact for you. And anytime you process an adoption, we also create the contact as well. Or if the contact's already in the system, we just check off the type of contact as an adopter. So as you look at your contacts, you may see random contacts in there and you don't know how they got added. Uh, just note that anytime someone uh, sends in an adoption application, for example, they will be added to your contacts as a potential adopter. Anytime somebody uh, sends in a foster application, they become a potential foster contact. If they adopt or foster, they will become an actual adopter or a foster contact. If you deny them, you put them in your deny list, they will have this tag, do not adopt, and that means that uh, you will have your own do not adopt list automatically created for you. Uh, one other thing, if they donate, they get added to your contacts as a donor. And that about wraps it up for contact automation. So this concludes the tutorial about automation throughout the pet established site and software. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please contact support at petstablish.com 
or give us a call on our toll-free number.